YouTube and welcome to lesson 30 of the Autodesk Maya 2017 training series. Today we're going to see some options in Viewport 2.0 and how we can utilize it to uh, get the max out of our graphic cards. So uh, Viewport 2.0 actually only works if you have a good uh, graphics card. I'm actually using a GTX 970, which is a decent level graphics card right there. So you can get 1080 for better performance over here. The system uh, I'm using is quite old. So I'm using AMD Phenom X4 processor. So my actually quite uh, works smooth in that as well. So which is quite surprising. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna uh, utilize the render now. So inside of viewport 2.0, you can see that there's a box like shape right here. So if I were to go in there, you can see that I got a lot of options. So if I were to actually see this, now there are some jagged lines over here, which doesn't actually look good. So if I want to uh, smoothen that out, then I can turn on something called anti-aliasing. So I can do smooth wireframing and anti-aliasing so that automatically makes it smooth as you can see so I can increase the sample count as much as I want so press 3 and you can see that the output is actually really smooth so let's actually apply blend to this so you can see that immediately the quality of the uh, viewport actually works good so this is actually good for previews but uh, it does take up a lot of graphics cards so you might want to consider um, keeping it to a minimal level. So if you use it too much, then your computer might freeze and it might run, stop running slow at a point. So you can see that this actually looks good. All right, and this looks quite smooth. Uh, you also got something called motion blur. And if you enable this, uh, let me enable the motion blur. So you, uh, you don't really see it in my graphics card, but if you were to increase the motion blur right here, you can see that there's a smooth motion right there. So, uh, that's there as well. So uh, other one I want to use over here. Let's say I can uh, This one not really important over here extra attribute floating anti-aliasing is there motion blur just turn it on hardware fault uh, Yeah, ambient occlusion. So if I were to turn that on uh, Let's see what happens over here. So if I were to move this closer to the ground you can see that there's an a black area just like in the real object so if you don't have uh, ambient occlusion then that is by default turned off so now you can actually see the motion blur is actually taking effect so i'm going to turn the motion blur off now so disable the motion blur and you can see that it is normal again so if i were to move this closer to the other object you can see that there's a black sort of a shadow that's forming around there which is ambient occlusion so i can increase the amount of ambient occlusion so you can see it more clearly i can increase the radius of the ambient occlusion so this actually gives a much more realistic feel to the model that you're making and you can see that the quality is actually looks very good so on the performance level as well, you can set the light limit and so forth. So if I were to go back onto the legacy de uh, default viewport, you can see that this actually looks very bland and doesn't look that good. But if you were to go to viewport 2.0 with, with all the options turned on, you can see that this actually looks quite good uh, for the um, uh, for the design. And this is actually useful if you are actually creating graphics for games because for games you can, you don't render. You just like. Uh, have to create everything in Maya and then render out from the graphic card itself just like it does de by default in the Maya viewport renderer. So this is actually very good for game designs and if you want to, if you want to make sure that the models actually look good in games then this is actually a, um, an option that you want to use. So uh, this is how you use it. So if I were to add in some lights here as well so it's gonna look quite good. So I'm gonna add in some lights so let me just expand the lights just like this press 7 so that my lights are activated. Let me just rotate this around along with my, okay, uh, along with my shadows. So let me turn on the shadows, depth map shadows, not depth map, I guess, uh, ray trace shadows. Oh wait, I'm gonna use depth map shadows and I'm gonna turn shadows. So you can see the shadows right there. Let me just increase the filter bias right there to, so that my shadows are smooth and it is soft, all right. So you can see that the shadows are there, just like there. All right, there you go. The shadows are there. And if I were to uh, duplicate this around, so if I were to duplicate this around, you can see that I can actually have a pretty neat looking output right there. So this actually looks good if you can see that. So I can render this out. So if you were to render this out, 
in hardware. I want to render this out in hardware. This is a rendering in software. If I were to select my hardware 2.0, then you uh, get the similar output right there. So let me just render that out. And you can see that the output is there. And it actually looks quite good over here. So this is how you actually utilize the uh, viewport 2.0 options for maximum output by using the graphic card. And this, is, as I said, is very useful if you are, are designing games. So hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.